Good morning, everyone. Appreciate you coming out early uh, for a second day of uh, Daytona International Speedway. It's NASCAR's preseason thunder. Um, more exciting news to, to keep you busy today. Um, I want to introduce uh, a friend and a colleague who I hope you guys all get to know uh, over the next several years, which is uh, Tim Buckman, who uh, will be working for NBC Sports, NBC Sports on the NASCAR front. Some of you may recall him from his Fox days. He worked there for a while before he decided to get into golf and Callaway, but uh, we'll, we'll forgive him for that. Uh, Tim Buckman. Thank you very much, David. Uh, and thank you all for being here today. I know it's a little bit of an earlier start than uh, perhaps what was uh, originally planned, and I know that this news has added a level of complexity to what's already a very busy time for you, so we really appreciate <laughs> you all being here. It's funny, when the news cycles get overloaded like this sometimes, I feel it's like being on the interstate and you run into some traffic due to construction work, and no matter what time of day or night it might be, you're always saying, like, why are they doing this now? Well, the reason uh, we're doing this now is because all of us at NBC Sports, from Jeff Benke, our vice president of NASCAR production, to Sam Flood, the executive producer for all of NBC Sports and NBCSN, we are just beyond thrilled to be back in the business of covering NASCAR. We're thrilled to be here in Daytona this week, which brings a level of excitement unlike any other sports venue on the planet. And two of the things we're really excited about are here in the form of our newest NBC Sports NASCAR analyst in Steve Letarte and Jeff Burton. Uh, Jeff, we announced last month. Steve, as you all learned uh, yesterday, will be joining us. So before we open up the room to questions, we're going to ask Sam, then Steve, then Jeff in that order to give us some opening remarks. And at that point, the room uh, will be all yours. We're going to take questions right up until 9 o'clock. If any of you don't get any in, please come find me afterwards, and we will do our best to take care of you. So that's all the uh, official particulars. Sam, please kick it off for us. All right. Thanks, Tim, and thank you all for coming out this morning. We couldn't be happier, as Tim said, to be back in the NASCAR business. Uh, the six years I spent on this project uh, the first time around with the NBC-TNT joint venture were six of the most rewarding and exciting years. We learned a lot, had a lot of fun, and met a lot of great people. And two of them are sitting up here next to me now um, because when we were doing it, we got to know people in the sport, and I knew there were some folks that were must-see TV. And I said if we ever got back in the sport, there were certain people we'd want on the team to be part of telling the story of this great sport to the nation on TV. Um, so as we assembled the team, uh, we first looked behind the camera, we brought Jeff Benke in, who's going to live in Charlotte. So having Jeff in Charlotte is going to give us a full-time presence around all the race teams, race shops, which we think is really, really important. Um, then Jeff Burton, any time there was a story, he's the first person we would send a pit reporter down to have a conversation with about because we knew he would have a strong opinion. It would be unfiltered, and we know that's going to happen when he starts broadcasting for us. And then Steve has so much personality, so much passion, so much energy that we know, no matter what's going on in the racetrack, even if it's a mellow race, <laughs> Steve is going to make sure it is not a mellow telecast. And we think that's a great thing. And we think for the viewers, it's going to be an incredible way to experience the race with these two gentlemen. So I'll let Mr. Burton... I mean, one other thing, not to, uh, we have the third member of the team is hiding somewhere in the room, um, Rick Allen. He has other responsibilities, uh, but we wanted to get a former track and field athlete in the group that could handle multitasking <laughs> and deal with a lot of different things. And since he was a decathlete, we think he can deal with these two gentlemen and keep Steve and Jeff in line, plus the folks on pit road that will be uh, announcing shorter, uh, shortly. And... I'll hand it off to Mr. Burton at this point. Well, and if not, he can run away from us really quickly, too, which I'm sure is his first instinct. But, um, you know, this to me has been a really exciting process, uh, having a chance to spend some time with Steve and, and, uh, and Rick and, and uh, Marty and, and Jeff Binky and Sam and, and really start to build a team. I mean, that's what this is. It's about being, being a team. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited about it. It's, to me, it's a... Uh, it's a natural, feels really natural to me. It feels like it's, uh, it's meant to be uh, really excited to put the, to finally get the, the three guys in the booth together and uh, to work with Steve 
it, it, to me, is going to be a lot of fun. Steve has so much energy, and and I'm uh, looking forward to disagreeing with him on on air and and having having loudly debates and prove once again that drivers truly are smarter than crew chiefs. But uh, the uh, you know it, it's it's going to be fun, and that's I mean honestly that's what it needs to be. It needs to be fun and 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 lighthearted and and serious when it needs to be serious. But you know this is this is a sport that has a lot of energy and a lot of excitement, and hopefully we can do a good job of bringing that bringing that out and uh you know bringing steve on is william steve and i have talked for for a little while about it and i think both of us are really excited about working together and this is uh this is fun i mean it's going to be a good time and and um the thing i'm really excited about is if you watch nbc sports it's professionalism it's done right it's done in a professional way it's not uh you know it's not hokey it's it's professional and uh, you know, to me, that's a lot for us to live up to. So I'm, I'm excited about it and looking forward to it, and and uh, really almost wish we could start start tomorrow. Well, I mean, I'll uh, I'll follow all that up. I guess I'd like to thank Sam and everybody at NBC. I'm excited about the opportunity. I don't think it's any secret in the room that um, you know I've always enjo- enjoyed the broadcast side. I've always dabbled in it. Um, I do have a, a pretty loud and colorful personality, and I think it it's enjoyable to be on that side of the camera. Um, you know, I have never been able to do it in a, in a capacity where I feel it was my responsibility to bring much to the broadcast other than my color and expertise. Because as the color guy, when you get invited in as a crew chief, you really don't have to prepare much. So it's going to be a new challenge, an exciting challenge. I think um, I've learned a lot in 19 years in the garage year of how to prepare for events and uh, be prepared for whatever c- could come at you. So I do agree with both of them that we'll be able to put on great broadcasts. And I think NASCAR has built a great sport. You know, I've lived in the garage now for 19 years. Um, you know, the, the, no one ever really gets a script, the timing of it all and how you have to do it. But, you know, I was the guy too young to be in the garage when I was a tire guy, and then I was the guy too young to be in the garage as a crew chief. So I thought it probably was only, you know, why not be the guy that's, man, you're really young to go into television. I figured it goes wrong with my track record. But uh, it's an exciting opportunity. It's one of those that even when we started talking, and I think it was in the press release, Sam and the entire NBC group's excitement is really what swayed me over. I think, um, you know, they, it's, it's not just a PR stunt. You know, they're very, very excited to be back into the sport. It's a sport that I obviously not only love, but oh, really my lifestyle too. My family, everything we've ever had has been driven by NASCAR. So I thought this was the next step, and I hope I can uh, take some of the responsibility to bring that back to the fans. We can open up for questions now. Jennifer, AP, Steve, um, why, why now get off the pit box, and, and do you fear you're going to miss the competition side of it? Um, well, I mean, there's all kinds of fears. I think change drives fear in anybody. would be lying if not. I mean, all I've known is Hendrick Motorsports since I was 16. I've never worked anywhere else. But, um, you know, there's a lot. I, I, I could waste the entire 30 minutes going through all the whys, but really when it comes down to it, Probably the number one thing is I have an eight and a ten year old child and and I know the commitment it takes to be a top level crew chief and uh, I don't know firsthand the commitment that it takes to be great on television and uh, I'm, you know Sam and these guys are going to teach me that, but in my conversations with Sam I, I don't think it's quite the same time commitment and travel commitment and those when it came down to it you know the lists are very, very long, but that would have to go to the top of the list you know I've always said and I don't think I've ever hit it hidden it from anyone that my family's always been my number one priority and uh, it comes down to that you know if I'm going to be unsuccessful in anything I do being a father shouldn't be on the list so I'm gonna put that one first and this allows me to put that one first and um, still be in a sport that I love and and join a great team. Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. Uh, Steve when making this decision did you have to battle any feelings of guilt of that you know you've spent 20 years at Hendrick and You've been leading junior up, um, you know, progressively better. But if you don't win a championship this year, I assume you'd feel like you've kind of left something on the table. I don't think I've, I'll feel I left something on the table as far as our on-track activity. But there's without a doubt guilt. When you work somewhere for 19 years, you know, my shot guy I hired when he was 19 years old. You know, my, there are guys I've come to work with since I was 16 years old that have raised me. Um, you know, some of the toughest conversations I've ever had in my life is when I, and I've had a lot of tough ones as a crew chief, and none of those compare when I had to sit across the desk from Rick Hendrick, and he already kind of knew the answer. But to tell him, the man who's kind of raised me, you know, that was a tough, tough conversation to have, to sit down with my early guys that, you know, we're a family. And, but they understood, you know, 
they're my family, but they're my second family. And, and I think we all care, each other, care about each other enough that they understood that me putting my first family first was what I've always preached to them and I would expect them to do. And they're really excited for me. Dale's been super supportive. He's excited. Rick's excited. I think it came out in all their, their quotes that, you know, this is a good move for me. Uh, it's opportunity now for Hendrick to decide what they want to do. And, and I think uh, it's kind of a win-win at the moment. Yeah, Jeff, Al Pierce from Auto Week. Late last year, you kept putting us off saying, um, I've got things in the works, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. Did this come before the Michael Waltrip offer, or was was the Waltrip test driver deal preceding this? Which which this, came first? This was this was ahead of everything. Okay. This was this was uh this was pretty far down the road and uh was was rattling around in my head before anything else for sure. The, the day we announced the deal, I was on the phone with Jeff. That's how much we knew Jeff was going to be part of this team and wanted to be part of this team. Jeff Clark from USA Today. Um, Steve, how did you break the news to Dale Jr.? And when did you do it? I mean, was this like phone call or text or, you know, how do you, how do you <laughs> tell somebody like that? Um, you know, I don't know if I can remember the specific time. You know, that's the unique thing about Dale and I is, you know, we have a tough, very strong professional relationship, but I think our success has really become from our personal relationship that he has taught me a lot about life in the last three years. I hope I've taught him a lot about how I prepare and, and how I go through life. And, you know, he's an unmarried guy without children. I'm a married guy with children, yet, man, we bounce a lot of stuff off one another. And, and you know, he was a person that I involved pretty early in the whole thing because, you know, I want his opinion. And, and we're very good at separating the two, you know, what his professional opinion is and what his personal opinion may be separate, you know, no different than mine. But, uh, you know, I don't think there was a specific time, but uh, we've had multiple conversations, um, you know, to do what we've tried to do the last three years and hopefully we'll do this year and win a bunch of races and contend for a championship is more than just, uh, you know, coming to work and saying hello. You know, we spent a lot of time away from the track together, not just time. We, uh, you know, we're very involved in each other's lives, and I, I hope that to continue past the end of 2014, but we still have a year to go, and I, I'm going to, this opportunity will really let me cherish that year like I would hope, where I can really, you know, when I come down here in a few weeks, this will be my last shot as a crew chief for a Daytona 500 pole for a 150s win. I've never won a Daytona 500 as a crew chief. You know, those opportunities, I think, will make me uh, really enjoy and cherish and put the right foot forward for the, you know, the next season. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it ultimately it's my decision, but, um, you know, we trust each other. I mean, it, this is something that I'm not going to go down this path and have him find, be the last guy to find out. I want him to be the first guy to find out behind maybe my wife. He's probably the second person I would have told to, to I mean, he's a smart guy. You know, his, his, his opinions, and, and he didn't, I wouldn't say he weighed in tremendously, but he listened, and sometimes all you really want somebody to do is listen. And uh, so, he, yeah, he's one of my confidants. You know, he's one of the guys that, we kind of go into battle together, and this is a life-changing decision, and he's been a life-changing guy for me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say we talked about it. I read Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Um, Steve, Rick said yesterday that, um, that they would address the issue of your successor at the end of the year, but are you going to be involved in that process at all and still contribute in that way? I mean, that's a great question. I wish I could answer it. I don't think it's up to me. Um, you know, I think it's the best job in the garage is becoming open. I, I would, you know, I would put it at the top of the list. I, uh, I think Rick has proven time and time and time again that he is spectacular with the people and he finds matchups that, that work. Um, Dale and I are the perfect example. You know, I knew Dale to say hello, but until he said, hey, he's going to be your guy, and we, I rode up to his house and we sat down and talked, we didn't know anything really about each other. And I think it's really blossomed into a great professional relationship and personally. So, I think that's a question for Rick Hendrick, how much he wants to involve me or not involve me. Um, I'd be happy to help him any way I can, um, help Dale, help anyone involved. You know, it's, um, you know, I wasn't making it up when they're my second family. They're going to be my second family even when I leave, when you're there that long. So, you know, I care about them like family, and I'll do anything I can do to help with their decision if they want my help. You know, sometimes, you know, Rick's Rick, right? I mean, he's like the, he's the magician to this. He puts the right people together. So I don't know if he needs my help, but if he wants it, I'll be here. 
Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. I've talked some with Jeff about NBC and what they'll be doing and how it's going to be different and sort of a fresh look and a new take. What do you look at? Uh, how do you look at what you want to accomplish, how you see the broadcast with you added to it? I'm sure you've been studying what you know teams have already done. What are you thinking you'll add to it and how in a different way? This is for me. Um. You know, I love racing. I don't have a memory in my life that I wasn't at a racetrack since I was five years old at Thunder Road in Vermont or at the Oxford 250. I've raced. It's all I've ever done. Um, I'm a huge sports fan. I think I understand baseball probably the best, football right behind that, enjoy golf. So I think what I'll be able to do perhaps is, um, and I think Jeff can help me on this because he's kind of like me in a racing family, that that Sam and, and – Jeff Banky and the NBC people, they're experts on broadcast, and we're experts on racing, and we're hoping when we combine those two, we can come up with the best way to broadcast the race. You know, racing is very different. You know, score is not kept. Um, you know, it's not like any other sport. You can't think of another sport where there's not a score, and there's not a score in racing until the final lap, and I think it needs to be covered that way, and it goes back to what I said about the excitement. When I met with Sam the first time, it was very clear to me that they aren't just going to put racing – on film and show it to the world, they're going to cover it and broadcast it in a way that makes it exciting for the race fan, and, and I hope I get a chance to chime in on that. Jeff, do you have any thoughts on that last question as well? Well, I just, I, I think enthusiasm. I mean, I think, um, you know, Steve and I both have a, have a passion for this sport. It's, it's, uh, it's something that we've both grown up with doing. It's not something you walk away from, and I, that, that's the thing is, I can't speak for Steve, but I feel like he feels the same way I do. Is we don't we don't want to walk away from the sport. This is another opportunity in the sport, and uh, bring our enthusiasm to the to the broadcast, and and hopefully bring our knowledge. I mean, Steve has worked with some of the some of the best drivers in our sport. Uh, he you know he's you know I've driven for some of the best car owners in our sport. I think we bring a we bring a unique perspective as every as every broadcaster broadcasters do. But ultimately, it's about enthusiasm, excitement, and facts. Honestly, facts is, you know, we, when we're talking, we need to be talking accurately. We need to, when we're, when we're talking, people are assuming what we're saying is, is factual and we got to make sure it is because I, you know, I think that's a disservice to our, to our race fans if we don't know what we're talking about. So bringing truth to the, to the, to it and making sure we do it with enthusiasm and excitement, which I don't think that's going to be a problem. um, That's, that really to me is what it's about. And we expect them to have the same work ethic, which we know they do from their careers to this point. But in television, uh, Chris Collinsworth is the gold standard for analysts in the NFL. That same work ethic and the way he goes about preparing for a game, he's going to talk with these guys. Is he going to talk about his systems and how he does things and the people he talks to to get ready for the number one show in television, Sunday Night Football? And that's part of the DNA that comes with NBC Sports. And these guys are going to be a part of that. And the expectation for greatness every time they do a show, and to do it right, and to talk to the right people and have the right information, and with Rick leading the way, we think it's going to be a really good combination. I think it's important to note, too, real quickly, is we aren't retiring. We're taking another position in the sport, and I think that's noted. that needs to be noted. We're not walking away from work. We're accepting a new challenge, and, and Steve and I have talked a lot about this. We want to outwork everybody. We want to you know this. This isn't a, a a a right to do this. We have to. We've earned it. Now we got to go earn the the. We got to go earn it every single day, and that's what he's done as a crew chief. That's what I feel like I've done as a driver, and we we hope to bring that to to the broadcast as well. Jim Utter, Charlotte Observer for Steve, um, particularly being Dale Junior's crew chief, you uh, are probably no stranger to having your decisions second guessed whether it be from fans on Twitter or so forth. Um, but I was just wondering, given the fact that there's the situation, <laughs> given the fact that, that you now uh, said, you know, I'm leaving at the end of this season, uh, are you ready for people to try to uh, everything that doesn't seemingly go right might get blamed on the idea that you're somehow not focused on the job at hand? Or do you even do you just approach that the way you've approached it the last three years? Well, I think, you know, it's a legitimate question. I think people are going to blame all kinds of stuff they want to blame. But if, you know, I've, like Jeff mentioned, you know, I've been able to work with some of the two biggest stars in the sport since I was a young kid and became the crew chief for Jeff. I've been second guessed and, and 
I can assure the group that no one second guesses or questions my decisions more than me. You know, I, I want to be better the next day than I was yesterday. And, and the only way you do that is to truly look in the mirror and decide what decisions you made. But I also agree, and I tell all my guys this, every day I get up when I look in the mirror, I say I'm going to outwork and, and outperform everyone in my field. And that, that's my goal. You know, does that always come through on the racetrack? Does that come through as success in victory lane? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. That's what I love about the sport. But um, they all, everyone in today's world has the ability with social media and the media to have opinions, and there's great opinions, and I've learned in life you need to not block them out but maybe listen because there's a little truth in every opinion, even if it's not 100% true. And, um, you know, I, I don't think that um, Rick or Dale or the people that work with me will ever question my effort. I hope they never would. I think they know how hard I work, and I would expect the same thing next year. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Day Sports. Kind of following up on um, <clears throat> Jim's question, Steve. Uh, this is sort of a unique situation, having a crew chief that has a known expiration date, but it's, it's not so unique for, for drivers. And, and oftentimes, when you have a lame duck driver, it, uh, it doesn't lead to great results. It devolves into morass of ill will and hurt feelings and, and, and <laughs> poor performance. <laughs> Um, That's a good pep talk. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, I need to bring you in the Go group. Go get them. <laughs> That's a, I think we should break on that one. Uh, how is it, it going to be different from a crew chief perspective, no, knowing that this is it? This is one and done, and you guys still want to win a championship. How are you guys going to still deliver that high level and, and kind of pick off where you maybe, – maybe that's part of the answer is that you guys ended on last year on such a high note. Is that almost beneficial that this last season is coming after your best season so far with the 88 or? I think what makes this situation unique compared to any driver situation I can remember is I'm not going to crew chief for another organization. So when I go to Charlotte – with Dale Jr., it's going to be our last trip together to Charlotte. And, and I feel I've been, I have, like I said earlier, I have the best job in the garage area. I've enjoyed every race we've ran together, every practice we've run together. The best part of my job are the four hours on Sunday afternoon we try to go win. So I think that this is a very different situation because, you know, I'm not working on being a broadcaster in 2014. I'm working on filling a trophy case. And to do that, we have to win our first race. And Dale and I have had that conversation, and he said it the best, you know, that this will give us an opportunity to, to really cherish those races and those opportunities. And I think, if anything, it might allow us to be better at our jobs because, um, you know, frustration sets in everyone in the garage area. It's a tough sport. If it, if it doesn't set in, you don't care enough about your job. And I think this is one more thing that could maybe drag us out of the frustration because you know there is a, there is a, a time stamp on the end of it. So... Do you really want to throw away your last trip to Sonoma together? Do you really want to not, you know, do you want to put personal feelings in the way of trying to win the Brickyard? And I think um, to do that would really, you know, it would be a, a shame for what we've built over the last three years, and I, I don't think it would happen. I think uh, social media and perhaps the media will have a, a much more issue with it than, than we will internally in the race team. Uh, Rick Miller from Racing Today for Jeff and Steve. I'm wondering if part of the appeal of this job is you get to sort of keep your current identity. I mean, you're still going to be identified, and fans will look at you as a driver, and Steve as a crew chief, and I assume you'll still sort of feel like part of the fraternity you've always been a part of, maybe even still living in the motor coach light. Is that part of what appeals to these jobs for you? Well, uh, part of it is for me. I mean, I, you know, my life's been around being around a racetrack, and, and uh, you know, you, you don't have a uh, – there's a – you know, there's a timeline on drivers. You don't you don't drive forever. And uh, when this this opportunity presented itself, it it just felt natural. And and yes, I you know some of my dearest friends are in this garage. And and uh, some of my, the lessons the lessons of my life honestly have been been learned in these garages. And and uh, so yeah, being being able to be a part of it and stay part of it is, is a huge attraction to me. I, I would not if somebody called me and said, Would you like to do Sunday night football, I probably wouldn't have, you know, any interest in that because it's not what I know. It's not my passion. But to be able to stay involved and, and uh, have, stay in touch with the people I know and have my identity, of course, that, that's a huge, a huge amount to me. Um, you know, I think without a doubt, you know, that's the easy, easy and honest truth that the garage area is my home and has been for a long time. Um, but I will say that I'm excited to take part in television. I am a colorful personality. I don't like to be in the, in the, the – I think Dale and I get along so well because I fill the conversations with words, right? I like to talk. I like to talk about the sport. I like to talk to people. Everyone in this room and I probably have a personal relationship where they've talked to me. And I feel I've been given the opportunities –
to work in this sport, and I feel I have some responsibility to bring those hoes to the fans. I think the fans have built the sport. The fans have, you know, as we all know, we have a huge fan base here at Junior Nation, right? So they've pushed me as a crew chief to try to be better, and I feel that I'm going to try to take that that responsibility to the broadcast booth and, and deliver back a broadcast about a race that they deserve so they can see it from maybe a different perspective than they have in the past. David Carvel, NASCAR.com. Sam, you have two guys as analysts who are straight out of the garage area. I'm assuming that's intentional and maybe you're trying to bring a more contemporary feel to your broadcasts? More than anything, it's these two guys are unique personalities. I mean, Jeff, I knew from day one, was someone we were going to target. And then Steve... I listened to Sirius XM, anytime he was on the radio, you stopped and paid attention. And that made me aware of how important it was to try and add into this group. So I like the fact that they're fresh out of the car. I like the fact that Jeff is going to be on the racetrack this year. I like the fact that Steve is going to win a lot of races this year and be able to go back and said we won here last year. So if those happen in the last 20 weeks of the season, yeah, we're fine yeah, with that. Yeah. So it'll be good, better for our telecasts. Um, but I do think the freshness and straight off the track is important to us and but more than anything it's these guys will tell the story of the race they're passionate about it and I think they'll outwork anyone and that's what I really like uh, we have a legacy of NBC sports are really working hard and making the product and making the sport shine we've done that with hockey we've done that with the NFL we do that with the Premier League we want to continue it here Dustin Long MRN uh, Steve when it's all over at Homestead after 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 four years with Dale, um, what is it or the things that you hope that you leave with Dale? In in the sense, certainly we've seen the progression of this team and of Dale, and maybe fair or unfair, you've gotten a lot of credit for it. When it's the lessons over these past four years, what what do you want to leave with Dale so that he can continue? to strive and, and further himself and, and, and have more and more chances of success? Well, I think, you know, two big things. I think the first is that their success in 2015 should be over the top. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the credit I'm given within the 88, but I'm just a really, really small part of it. Um, Dale's an internal leader within the team without even asking to be. The guys on the team, um, they need very little direction to try to be the best. They, they do a lot on their own. Um, so I think that their success in 2015 will, will mean a lot to me. I hope that when I leave, they can be as successful or more su su successful than we were as a team. Um, and then just the friendships, all the friendships I've created, I'd like for them to continue. I hope that moving forward into my new career that I can maintain the friendships as friendships and not, not be seen that I'm trying to leverage them to, to help my new position. But... Dale and I are friends. I hope to spend time together and, and support him any way I can in his new venture. But this team, uh, you know, it, it's a great group of guys with a great driver. They're going to win a lot of races whether I'm on the pit box or not. We're going to take our final question here as we're running right up into 9 o'clock. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. For Jeff and Steve both, for your entire careers, your focus has been on individual teams. You know, what's, what's best for the 31, what's best for the 88 or, or whatever. Is it going to be difficult for you guys to step back and see the sport as a whole and the changes in it and, and understand what's going on in it, because just basically because you're looking at it differently now? I think that's a, that's a really good question. And I think that, um, you know, I got exposed to that a lot in, in trying to help move the ball a little bit from a safety standpoint. I, you know, I got, I got exposed to that some and, and, um, you know, I'd, I think that for the most part, you'd be surprised how many drivers and crew chiefs and we really talk about what's best for the sport. Now, ultimately, what we really care about is what's best for us. But there's probably more conversation about that than you realize. And I think there's, there's a healthy respect in the garage for, for understanding that if the sport isn't in good shape and, and the fans aren't happy, that we got a problem. And I think, we've, I think that's evolved as the economy went down and viewership started going down. Uh, I think we have more appreciation of that today than we did, you know, say 10 years ago. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it is going to be a transition. But at the same time, we also, we want to be the best. We want to be the best in this business. You know, we want to do a better job than our competition. We want to be, you know, we want to be the best. It's kind of like being a, you know, 
he, he crew chiefs the 88, but he also wants the 24 to run well. He wants, you know what I mean? So I think there's a little bit of a shift in, in our thought process, but not as big as you would think. Yeah, I think there's really two parts to that. You know, the first is how will I be able to see the sport from a global standpoint? I think I've been very fortunate to work with probably the two best ambassadors or two of the biggest ambassadors for NASCAR. And I think Jeff Gordon's had a great career, but I don't think anyone in the room here would ever question what he's done for the sport on a global level, not even a personal level. He's very involved. Um, he's always been involved. And I think he, just like Jeff said here, I think everyone in that garage here takes ownership in the brand of NASCAR, and they do everything they can try to do to push it forward. And I think Jeff did that, and there's no doubt in my mind that Dale Jr. does that. You know, he, he is, you know, one of the faces of NASCAR, definitely the most popular face. I don't think he takes that lightly. I think he understands his role within it, and he's taught me that I have a role within it. Our team has a role within it. And, you know, the second part of that question is I feel I still have a team. You know, that's the beauty of this. And, and after talking to Sam, how I understood it, and I, I, that excites me in that, um, you know, we, we will have a team just like we do as a race team. You know, our goal isn't to win the race. Our goals are different. But we still have a team that we kind of go into battle with. And, and when the, the race is put on, this team has a responsibility to be the best out there. And you've heard Sam say it multiple times about work ethic and Jeff say it about preparation. And, um, you know, that's not something I feel I would ever be able to shut off. You know, my joke is always, you know, you can hire any position on a race team by having them go clean a room. Because no matter what job you do, whether you're a race car driver or a crew chief or a media person, it becomes a job at some point at some day. I have friends that are golfers, and they'll say, you don't want to ruin a great hobby, make it your job. Right? And, and that's the truth. It's our jobs, and we all don't love them every single day you can't. So what carries you through those days are your responsibilities, your work ethic, ethic and how you've been raised. And I think that that will force Jeff and I to see the sport as it needs to be seen from the broadcast booth, and it will force the group that NBC's assembled to be the best, best on television. Again, thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Really appreciate it. And uh, if anyone didn't get their question in, please come see me, and uh, we'll do your best to help us out.